Hello everyone. In this video, we would learn about bioprocessing and it's just an overview of that. So, what is bioprocessing? Bioprocessing is a technique by which we can use biological resources such as living cells and using their machineries, we can pro use products such as enzymes, metabolites, etc., which have important biomedical relevance. Now, definitely the bioprocess would take place in a bioreactor, in a controlled environment, right? And the key player of this bioprocessing is the biological cell. Sometimes it could be a bacteria, sometimes it could be a mammalian cell, or sometimes it could be a plant cell as well. So, bioprocess involves bacteria, mammalian cell, or even cell free systems. Now, let's try to understand what type of products could be generated using this bioprocessing method. The product could be secreted metabolite, which is secreted outside. The product could be an enzyme, which is relevant for biomedical research, or maybe this enzyme is important therapeutic drug. Now, it could be also a recombinant protein used for biomedical research. So, all of these type of products can be generated using a bioprocessor. Now, the bioprocessor can produce these products in a controlled environment. But before we understand bioprocessing, we need to understand some very basics. Imagine you are cooking for your family. So, you need a very small vessel, right? But when you cook for the whole village or the whole community, you need a bigger cooking pot. So, the environment where these cooking would happen is different. But the cooking is same. The reactions are same but only the scale is different. Similarly, bioprocessing is also a industrial process or it's a macro level um, reaction. Okay, So, let's try to take a specific example. So, let's say you work with this particular enzyme and you want this enzyme to be produced. So, what you are going to do in lab, if you need these enzyme for a small scale work, you would definitely try to generate this enzyme. You would use the cloning workflow where you clone your gene of interest using uh, the cloning methods and ultimately you would transfect that recombinant plasmid into a bacteria. This plasmid would express its product inside the bacteria and you would grow the bacteria as the bacteria grows, the product also grows inside the bacteria. Later on, using column chromatography and other chromatographic tools, you would purify that protein and finally that protein is with you and it would be enough for your work. But imagine once you need a, some kind of product such as an antibody, such as a restriction enzyme or such as recombinant proteins for your own research, each time you are not going to make it from the scratch, right? You are going to look for companies who deliver all of these enzymes right? And the question is, how does these companies produce these things in bulk? The company would deliver these products to your doorstep and you would start using it. But the question is, how does the bulk preparation takes place inside the industry, right? So, we are going to talk about that industrial aspect of biological processing. So, obviously, the overall formula is same. You need to have a recombinant plasmid, you need to have bacteria which would be generating the product, but the reaction container or the reaction conditions are different and the scale is different. So, you can clearly understand in a factory there is an amp up in the culture volume from which you are purifying. In lab, you might need one microliter of this particular enzyme. But worldwide, people need one microliter. So, the factory has to generate liters and liters of that enzyme and that is not an easy process. So, let's begin from the scratch what is happening inside a bioprocessing industry. So, they have a seed stock. So, this seed stock would contain bacteria. You would transfect the bacteria with the plasmid that you want to express inside this bacteria. Now, you would gradually scale up your culture volume from a small culture uh, volume to a big one. And ultimately, you would take your culture into a fermentation 
reactor or a bioreactor. We'll come to the details of the bioreactor in a moment, but in the bioreactor, your product would be harvested. That means your bacteria would grow in number. As the bacteria is growing in number, your product is also generated. Now, after that, your product need to be recovered from the bacteria, right? So you have to harvest the cells and you have to do centrifugation followed by some kind of separation by chromatographic method. Then there would be several rounds of uh, purification steps, polishing step, and ultimately it would pass through a quality control. You have to understand whether the product which is generated is actually functional or not, whether it is okay for it to be released in the market. So quality control step is very important and ultimately it would be packaged and delivered to its proper location. So the step where the cells are generated in a massive amount is known as the upstream processing. So this upstream processes happens in the bioreactor. Whereas the recovery process, purification process, all of these comprise the downstream processing, which includes processing, purification, polishing, quality control, and packaging. So first of all, you can take a frozen seed stock, then you can put it in, put that culture in a relatively bigger vessel. Then this culture would be revived. After that, you have to amp up the volume. So you have to gradually amp up the volume. And once the volume reach quite a lot, then you have to put it in a bioreactor tank. So let's talk about the bioreactor. So there are lots of lots of component in this bioreactor tank. So we are going to talk about it one by one. So let's look at the bits and pieces, okay? So first, there is the tank where the broth would stay, right? And this tank is actually sterile. It ensures the microbe that you need only is able to grow. It does not ensure growth of a random microbe. Obviously, there is a stirring pedal attached to a DC motor. So it would allow this pedal to rotate and its speed can be controlled. So in this rotation process, heat might be generated. So overall, in order to maintain the temperature of the bioreactor, there would be coolant systems as well. So there are coolant systems running around these broth tank. After that, there would be an aeration unit which bubbles oxygen through this uh, media. Now, some microbes might need oxygen, some might not need oxygen. So this component is variable. So this ensures the dissolved oxygen level in the bioreactor is in a controllable amount. After that, there would be electronic uh, display units and there would be control boards and control panels. There would be inlet and outlet chamber as well. So all that comprises bioreactor. After that, the product that is generated in the bioreactor would pass through centrifuge. And this centrifuge does not look like the centrifuge which is in your lab bench. So these centrifuge are industrial scale centrifuge and they are very different looking, right? Overall, this is a bioreactor and this is how the pedals are spinning. So what we learned so far is the upstream process. The upstream process refers to uh, the massive amplification of the microbes of the cell and that would be generating the substances that is our that is of our interest in a massive amount but it still remain still remain in an unpurified uh, stage right so upstream process can be induced uh, upstream process can include um, inoculum development media development improvement of the inoculum by genetic engineering process so all the molecular biology process at the initial step and ultimately optimizing the growth kinetics. So you have to come to a growth, I mean, growth condition, which, will, which is faster, cost effective, and very efficient. So all of these things would be important when you're making a product in an industry scale. Now coming to the downstream process. So downstream processing refers to recovery and purification of the biosynthetic product, which is generated in the upstream process. Now it needs to be purified. So the products that are generated, let's see how it is purified. Now before that, let us take a simple example of two kind of scenario. One type, the product could be extracellular, some kind of metabolite which is excreted out of these bacteria. Now the product could be also intracellular, 
for example, this is the enzyme inside the bacteria. So let's see how each type of products can be purified and recovered. So coming to the extracellular product purification. So in this case, the bioreactor tank would be connected to a centrifuge and this centrifuge, the output of this centrifuge will be connected to a filtration unit. So the bio react in the bioreactor tank, there would be bacteria and the bacteria would have several metabolites. Some of these metabolites would be of our interest and some are useless for us. So in the centrifuge, the first pass separation takes place. So you settle down all the big heavy cells in the bottom and all the metabolites including useful and non-useful metabolites are in the solution. Now when this solution is passed through the filtration unit, you can purify your product of interest based on column chromatographic techniques or many other techniques. So this is how an extracellular product can be or an extracellular metabolite can be filtered. Now coming to an intracellular product such as an enzyme. So let's say this enzyme is important for your biological research. So in order to get the enzyme, you have to disrupt the cell and you need a cell disruption system. And there are huge industrial grade pistons which actually breaks apart the cell by mechanical shearing and try to get all this product out in the solution. Now once the product is out in the solution, you can sort and the product is soluble if it's an enzyme, then you can get up, get rid of all of these debris using this centrifuge whereas my product would be in the dissolved state right in the supernatant so the supernatant is collected and followed by several other downstream processing such as uh, passing through a column so this broth which has our protein of interest has to be concentrated because there is a huge volume in order of thousands of liters of culture could be inside a tank so that is why this broth need to be concentrated in order to recover the product efficiently. Now that is why dewatering step could be an essential step where you remove the excess amount of water with the application of vacuum drying process. Now there could be initial purification of the metabolites. For example, you use HPLC based columns or any kind of column chromatographic, high throughput column chromatographic method to purify your protein and depending upon the nature of your product, what you want to purify, you can use your column such as hydrophobic interaction column or an ion exchange column. Any kind of column you can use in these HPLC setups. Again, these HPLC setups differ a lot from that we use in our day-to-day -day lab work and because everything here is an industrial scale process, right? So it's a macro level process. Lastly, there is polishing and quality control. So this polishing, polishing ensures that this particular product would be 98 to 100% pure and all the purified product should be mixed with inert uh, ingredients and that ensures the product would be purified and it would be preserved for a long time, it won't be degraded quickly and ultimately there is a quality control step which is very important for this product development and after these things, these products would be packaged nicely and distributed. Where, it, where the demand is, right? So overall in this video, we learned about the steps of bio, uh, bioprocessing. We looked at what is downstream, what is upstream process. We kind of had an overview of downstream and upstream process. So in subsequent videos, we would look at all of these things in nitty gritty details, but this was just an overview. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon for notification, share this video in the social media for uh, such that I can reach bigger audience. My lectures are also present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. And you can use AP10, my code, to get a 10% discount in my courses. Thank you, guys.